why is the 7900X better than the 7950X for you? What does it do better and why is it important to make the right choice? This is a topic I really care about because it hurts me when gamers and enthusiasts throw money out of the window for something they don't even really need. But what's this all about? What do I actually mean? We'll take a closer look at the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X CPU today that comes equipped with 12 cores and 24 threads, on a Zen 4 basis, that is. Price. The MSRP for the 7900X is at 549 US dollars, and therefore, even from a price point of view, we are certainly looking at the direct successor to the Ryzen 9 5900X. The retail price in November 2022 is at 550 to 560 dollars. Now that's certainly less than what we have to shell out for the flagship 7950X, but I wouldn't really consider this particular Ryzen 9 SKU to be that affordable either. I'd also like to make it clear that my Intel Raptor Lake CPUs for my tests and comparisons have not arrived yet, which is why I'll be comparing against past CPU legends. Sometime later, I will take care of the most recent comparisons. Furthermore, I'd like to kindly thank Yargios over at the online shop Equipper for getting a hold of all these CPUs for my testing. And as so often, no, I've paid for all this stuff out of my own pocket. Hashtag not sponsored. Architecture. The Ryzen 9 7900X goes by the codename Raphael and sports speedy Zen 4 cores. Those are based on TSMC's new 5 nanometer process, whereas for the IO die, the 6 nanometer process has been used. This of course also means that AMD keeps making use of their chiplet designs. Just like the flagship 7950X, the 7900X does too come with two active CCDs although AMD disabled 4 cores to make it 12 cores. All Ryzen 7000 models now also feature integrated Radeon graphics, but there's not that much to rejoice about since the iGPU performance turns out to be pretty lame. I'll show you what it's capable of in an upcoming video. Ryzen 7000 also marks the birth of a brand new socket named AM5. And obviously AMD has abandoned their long-lasting tradition of churning out CPUs based on PGA sockets. AMD now too has gone with an LGA socket, just like Intel has been doing for many, many years. The CPUs are now pinless. Also meaning that there are new motherboards to choose from. AMD have launched four chipsets in total, going by the names X670E, X670, B650E, and B650. Due to numerous factors, these boards ended up becoming pretty expensive though, leading to a significant investment when deciding to pull the trigger on AM5, especially since DDR5 RAM is also part of it. On the other hand, we get the latest and greatest features such as PCIe 5.0, and looking at it from this perspective, AMD plans on supporting the new platform at least until 2025. Test setup. The 7900X for my tests I've planted onto the fancy and yet well equipped ASRock X670E Pro RS motherboard. While this may not be the best of the best and most expensive boards out there, it lacks nothing I'd consider critical, which is why I can praise it. Of course, I'm once again grabbing my new Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 RAM with a capacity of 32 gigabytes and a frequency of 6000 MHz. We are talking CL36 timings. Besides XMP, we are also being offered an Expo profile specifically developed for AMD CPUs. As for the CPU cooler, I'll again use the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 FX 360mm AIO liquid cooler that is known to support AM5 without any issues. All that's missing now is the graphics card. This is where the ASUS RTX 3090 Tough Gaming OC comes into play to help minimize many of the GPU bottlenecks. Clock speeds. At full load, we are initially able to read out 5.1 to 5.2 GHz, although I'd like to point out that CCD number 2 on average does clock over 100 MHz lower than CCD number 1 does. 
if we keep running at full load for an extended period of time, the clock speeds do in fact drop slightly, but barely. Despite high temperatures, at no point did the CPU thermal throttle in my tests. The highest boost clock I achieved with my 7900X even beats AMD's max stated boost clock by a whopping 100 MHz. I'm reading out 5.7 GHz, whereas AMD states 5.6 GHz. Not bad, I guess. We're also witnessing a really high clock speed in-game, and that's about 5.5 GHz. These are some really nice numbers indeed. Performance. What can I say, the Ryzen 9 7900X is offering fantastic performance. With its blazing fast 12 cores, it's not only an extremely capable workhorse, but does impress in games equally as much. However, as stated in the beginning of the video, I have yet to test and compare against the performance of Intel's 13th gen counterpart. Since those CPUs haven't arrived for me yet, I decided on directly comparing against the predecessor 5900X as well as the Ryzen 7 5800X and Ryzen 9 3900X, the latter being a CPU that came out in 2019, thus giving us a good idea on how much has actually changed over the last few years. Needless to say, the 7900X performs noticeably worse in productivity tests such as rendering and the like compared to the 7950X. That makes sense. Nonetheless, I find it pretty fascinating that the 7900X with its 12 cores manages to clearly blow the X flagship 5950X sporting 16 cores out of the water. And in fact, the 7900X performs so well that in certain areas you could completely skip the more expensive 7950X if you don't care about the last few percent of higher performance. So those of you that are thinking the Ryzen 9 7900X 
doesn't belong in a workstation setup, you're wrong. For that use case, it's actually incredible. Besides that, we are also seeing phenomenal gaming results. And this is where we can boldly claim the 7900X in games is totally on par with the 7950X. As far as the 7900X is concerned, one could almost state it's a perfect hybrid between gaming and workstation CPU. Nonetheless, I'd like to say it once more, spending way over $500 on a CPU you're only going to game with hardly makes any sense. Sure, if you have the money and desire to build yourselves such a system, go ahead and do so. But for those of us that need to pay attention on our limited budgets, we need to clearly differentiate what the actual target audience for the 7900X is. It's most certainly not gamers. Gamers that do streaming, video editing, that's more like it. Generally speaking, even a CPU part of the AM4 lineup is capable of delivering comparable gaming performance. We're of course talking about the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with 3D vCache. Due to the enormous gaming performance and fairly attractive platform costs, the 5800X 3D sure is a very compelling option to many. Unfortunately, I've never owned that particular CPU, which is why I couldn't do any testing with it. If you'd like to go with Team Blue, you could alternatively grab a CPU of Intel's 12th or 13th gen offerings and keep using your DDR4 RAM because yes, Intel allows for us consumers to go through some kind of transitional phase from DDR4 to DDR5 as far as Alder Lake and Raptor Lake processors are concerned. Certainly a great way to save some money. So as much as I'd like to praise the Ryzen 9 7900X as a gaming CPU, I'd like to make it very clear that I have yet to put the 7900X up against Intel's latest counterpart. All I can say right now is, Intel certainly has stirred up the market quite nicely with their latest release. Not quite as pleasant is the sight of the temperatures I had to read out for the 7900X. Even though I was cooling it with a 360mm AIO liquid cooler, at full load I still got to a whopping 90 degrees Celsius. At least it wasn't 95 degrees that AMD declared as the limit. Still describing this situation as toasty is not an exaggeration. The power consumption too is not particularly nice to look at, but I wouldn't consider it to be necessarily bad by any means. I've measured 307 watts for the 7900X, that's slightly less than what an i9-12900K consumes. All while the 7900X brings noticeably more performance to the table, especially in those productivity workloads. Nonetheless, a thorn in my eye clearly is the idle power draw. I've already harshly criticized the 7950X for that. While 89 watts are noticeably lower than the 7950X's 123 watts, the word optimal is not fitting here. Yet I find the idle power draw somewhat acceptable. That's clearly due to AMD having disabled four cores here. That fact alone makes the 7900X far more attractive than the 7950X for me. I do, however, want to point out that with a little bit of PBO2 tuning within the BIOS, with a few simple steps, you can achieve significantly higher efficiency and noticeably lower temperatures. And all that without really losing any CPU performance along the way. Even with the 7950X, I managed to achieve great results. More on that topic and on how to lower power draw and temperatures in an upcoming separate video of mine. I'd also like to mention that I've decided last minute to include the power draw while gaming, and that's why there's hardly any data in that chart for now. Conclusion The Ryzen 9 7900X, in my opinion, without a doubt is an outstanding enthusiast-grade CPU. It does remarkably well in both productivity as well as gaming. We see a great balance between these two aspects. But it is and remains obvious, the 7900X clearly is more of a workhorse than a processor meant to go into a gaming rig. So as a consumer, one should be aware of that so as to not spend too much money on performance and headroom one doesn't actually need. You should also take a look at what the competition has positioned against the CPU. Raptor Lake partially looks even more promising, but not all that glitters is gold. Even Intel's new CPUs are to some extent plagued with a few noteworthy downsides. 
What those are, you'll find out in my upcoming tests. The AMD Ryzen 9 7900X I consider a much better and a more fitting choice than the 7950X for many out there. It's very noticeably faster than the X flagship 5950X and consumes less power than the 7950X does. Still, the 7900X is not really a universal solution either, making it hard for me to clearly recommend it. At the end of the day, every one of you will have to take a close look what you actually use your CPU for and base your decision off of that whether or not a 7900X fits your needs. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.